Despite the appendix having no clear or defined function, due to its relative frequency in becoming blocked and pathological, it's a structure that we need to have a detailed knowledge of. The appendix is a narrow, blind-ended tube, which is attached to the posteromedial end of the cecum. The appendix itself is derived from the embryological midgut and appears during the fifth month of gestation. The appendix is named vermiform due to its resemblance to a worm, which in Latin is vermes. It does vary in length between individuals and measures between 2 cm to 20 cm, so it can get surprisingly long. But the average length is around 8 to 10 cm. Typically, the base of the appendix is located at the point of the cecum where the longitudinal tenei coli converge. And by remembering this, it gives us an easy way to find the appendix if we're struggling to locate it during surgery. The layers of the appendix are similar to those of the large intestine, with the outer serosa layer covering two layers of the muscularis propria, an outer fully circumferential longitudinal muscle layer, followed by an inner circumferential layer. Continuing inward, the two innermost layers are the submucosa and the mucosal layers. The key distinguishing characteristics of the appendix compared to the rest of the large bowel are the presence of a high number of lymphoid aggregates in the submucosal layer, which are particularly prominent in adolescence, but then diminish gradually with increasing age. In terms of the nerve supply to the appendix, it's innervated by both sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system which, in keeping with the midgut embryological origin of the appendix, are carried by the iliocolic branch of the superior mesenteric plexus. The importance of this nerve distribution and the fact that the sympathetic afferent nerve fibres of the appendix arise at the T10 level of the spinal cord explains why patients with early appendicitis experience an initial visceral pain around the central abdomen, which is described as a dull ache, before then becoming localised to the right elic fossa. The arterial supply to the appendix is via the appendicular artery, and here we can see it branching off the ileocolic artery. Before running parallel with the appendix, within the small messenger of the appendix, which we refer to as the mesoappendix. The location of the tip of the appendix can be highly variable. However, the position of the base is far more predictable. Typically, we find it at a point two-thirds the distance along a straight line from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine, or ACIS, as we can see demonstrated here. We refer to this point as McBurney's point, after the 19th century American surgeon Charles McBurney, who described this point as being the location of maximal tenderness in patients with acute appendicitis. And here we can see how it corresponds nicely with the location of the appendix base. As we've already mentioned, the position of the appendix base is typically found around McBurney's point. However, there is a relatively high variability in the position of the appendix tip. The majority of the time, the appendix is located in a retrocecal position. So it lies behind the cecum. In 20% of cases, the tip lies in the patient's pelvis. The remaining possible positions are pretty rare, with paracecal and subsecal making up 2 and 1.5% respectively. And preileal and postileal making up 1 and 0.5%. But why do we actually care where the tip lies? Well, the reason we care is that the location and the type of symptoms and signs that the patient experiences is often dependent on where the position of this tip lies.